I'm very happy and proud to open this uh, one-day meeting uh, organized by INSERM on immunopsychiatry and very happy to welcome all of you. I'm happy to see that we have uh, many young colleagues attending the meeting, which is a very good sign uh, that the field is moving on. We have 150 people uh, listed as uh, supposed to be coming. Some of them are probably late sleepers. I hope she, they will show up because we also have a long li waiting list of people willing to come. So yesterday evening, uh, Yehuda Schoenfeld, who is our first speaker, asked me to find three good news. And on, in, in, in the days with, where we had lots of bad news, I, it took me the whole night to find three good news, but now I got them. So the first good news is that INSERM selected this year uh, the GRS, which are the name for Journée Recherche et Santé. They chose our field of immunopsychiatry. Thus, I suppose, acknowledging the fact that immunology will bring to psychiatry what we need in terms of improvement of understanding of the psychiatric disorders, improvement of biomarkers to better diagnose, and improvement in treatment strategies. And I want to thank INSERM for their very good choice and to thank particularly Barroso and Christine Tufro who have helped us with the organization of this one day meeting and Riyad Tamouza and Vincent Vieillard who have helped me with the scientific organization of the meeting. The second good news is that we're going today to listen to prominent speakers in the field and I want to thank them to have made the journey and to have taken the time to share their knowledge with us. Thank you very much indeed. And the third good news is that I hope you're going to be convinced today uh, that the field is really moving fast for uh, really the sake and the improvement of the health of our patients. So I don't want to take the microphone too long. I just want to make a few minutes uh, of introduction to explain why this field is so important to us. So first, just uh, to remind all of you uh, of uh, the state and the importance of psychiatric disorders, I just want to summarize the data showing that psychiatric disorders are really a major public health concern in strong need of innovation in France, but not only in France. So you probably all know that uh, associated to psychiatric disorders is a very high impact in terms of, for example, the DALIs. The DALIs are the number of age lost uh, either because of early death or because of disability due to a particular disorder. And on this slide, you can very clearly show that the first cause of DALIs is psychiatric disorders well above neurological conditions, well above cardiovascular disease. The second element is that uh, WHO predicts that by 2020, psychiatric disorders are going to be the first cause of disability. The second element of this slide is that uh, psychiatric disorders are associated with a very high prevalence, estimated in Europe to be up to 38% of people ha having had having or that will have a psychiatric disorders. The third point is cost. Uh, we all know that psychiatric disorders throughout the world is associated with a very high cost. And this is particularly the case in France where we have been able to demonstrate that direct and indirect costs associated to psychiatric disorders go up to above 100 billion euro every year. Despite these figures, uh, there is a very limited investment in uh, research, in, in funding for research in psychiatry in France, where uh, public funding for psychiatry is uh, close to 2% of the overall budget of biomedical research, despite the fact that there was a very good publication made by the London School of Economics showing that there is a high return on investment, possibly the highest of all medical fields, close to 37%. The other uh, worrying figure is the decline of discoveries of new treatments in the field for the past years. Despite all these figures that I've showed you, the drug discovery is at a near standstill for psychiatric disorders. And we all hope that immunology will bring the industry back to the field 
if we have reliable drug targets, if we have new pathways and precise pathophysiology, if we of course have valid biomarkers for disease stratification, good and precise endpoints for assessment, and of course animal models to do preclinical studies. We all have a dream which was described in a project that we all hoped to be created by uh, an, a, and created within an institute which would lead to development of what we call precision medicine in psychiatry. And we strongly believe that immunology would help us to develop better treatment for one or a group of patients precisely identified through markers of immune system. Today, the psychiatric disorders are hit very heterogeneous, overlapping both with psychiatric disorders but also with somatic conditions. And we have very few hints as to how to stratify objectively patients. So the dream and the vision is that we should use several types of biomarkers, including all the ones that you're going to listen today regarding immunology, to combine these markers with different multimodal modalities with the help of mathematicians able to do machine learning in order to identify homogeneous subgroups to whom we could specifically uh, define uh, uh, st therapeutic strategies. And in the field of immunology, you're going to listen today to several new types of strategies which are not available today for patients but are available for research. And this is the case of probiotics, of anti-inflammatory drug, of anti-cytokines, of cell-based therapy, and also vagus nerve therapy. All these treatments have an immune target. I will start by thanking all the colleagues in France who are working together to help the field of immunopsychiatry. We try to gather them in a consortium, in a network that was not created, but we're still uh, hoping to create such a network. And all these people are working uh, very uh, thoroughly and deeply to try to improve the field and to try to work in this field. And I want to thank particularly uh, in Hôpital Saint-Louis, and now in Mondor, Dr. Riyad Tamouza, Dr. Vincent Vieillard in Salpêtrière, David Klatzmann also in Salpêtrière, Uwe Mascos at Institut Pasteur, Joël Doré at INRA, Lucille Capuron, INRA Bordeaux, Laurent Groc, Bordeaux CNRS, Jérôme Honora, Lyon Inserm, Nicolas Gleichenhaus, Nice CNRS, Michel Nulnis, Nantes, and the list is of course not uh, totally described here, but it's just to give you an idea of how active the field is in France and uh, this is something extremely rewarding. And we're also working in my department with uh, clinicians uh, under the supervision of Nora Amdani, with the help of Emmanuel Le Guen and Corentin Rabu, uh, in our INSERM lab with the help of Stéphane Jamin and Jocelyn Wenou. And we have several international co collaborations that also help the field move forward. And I also want to thank Emo Drexage because thanks to him, we have now a new European project going to be started next year, which is called mood stratification, which is very important for the field as well. So just to give you very briefly the outline of what you're going to listen today and to uh, put forward the results of the French teams, just want to show you that today the, the vision we have for immunopsychiatry is that this low-grade inflammation which we character, with which we characterize the patients are the consequence of different environmental risk factors that occur from pregnancy to adulthood. And these environmental factors that we're starting to describe, in particular infectious fa factors, but also stre severe stress or autoantibodies, uh, are interacting with an immunogenetic background that Riata Musa is going to describe. And the chronic low-grade inflammation has different impact in the brain, in the periphery, and also in the gut. What we've been able to describe is the fact that this genetic background probably put subjects at risk of not defending themselves against different insults in the environment. And I took here the example of infections, but it's probably the same with pollutants, for example, which we do not know precisely for the moment. The other very prominent finding has been obtained by the group of Laurent Groc. You're going to listen to this uh, today. And thanks to molecular neuroimaging, he's been able to demonstrate that the autoantibodies found in the patients have specific mode of action, which is very important to understand pathophysiology and treatment of our patients. 
The other examples brought by machine learning is the fact that combining uh, biological data such as cytokines with clinical factors, we're starting to be able to stratify patients and uh, identify responses to treatment. And this is also a great hope for improvement of prognosis. I'm going to stop here. The list was just intended to show you that the field was active, and I hope you're going now to enjoy as much as I will do all the speakers that we're going to listen to. And I give the floor to Professor Sharp.